So, um, Michael, give us a taster of, of what's, what's coming. Um, so this is the final um, uh, course on it, or the final week of it. And what we're going to be discussing is uh, in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the new heaven and new earth, what is that actually all about? You know, we're, we're not bad as Catholics um, at thinking about, you know, social justice issues, um, even mass sacraments, those kind of things. But what happens after death? Like, you know, Ooh. what's actually Brilliant. going on? What's back there? Brilliant. So it's, it's actually seven o'clock. I don't know where the good doctor is. So <laughs> sure. we'll, I, think we'll say, I think we'll say a prayer and then um, we'll begin and hopefully you'll join us presently. Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you for this course, this for Michael and Michael, and for all that we've learned. As we gather together in this for this final hour, um, may you, your Holy Spirit guide all our thoughts and guide Michael as he leads us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Alrighty, let's see if I am able to share my screen, you great. Okay. No. Can you see this? Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Nothing's come up in this share screen. Oh. Oh, I didn't hit share. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, okay. that's good. <clears throat> All righty. So, this thing, um, oh, we're going to be talking about revealing revelation, a new heaven, a new earth. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the last judgment. Um, in the book of Revelation, it does say in chapter 20, um, and I saw a great white throne. Um, hold on, if I can move my thing, where am I? Let me just, or Francis, do you want to just read out that passage for me? No problem. Yeah. So this is from Revelation 20 and it reads, and I saw a great white throne and one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And he, and sorry, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah. Thanks. So this is how we're going to start our reflection here. Um, in the book of Revelation, it's showing us the glorious destiny of the universe and of all who follow Christ faithfully. Um, in the book of Revelation, um, St. John paints for us a very vivid image of the vision God gave him of a new heaven and new earth. Scripture and tradition also tell us that our bodies will be made new, um, like there is in Christ's body himself. Um, it's curious, you know, like I kind of said at the start, um, we Catholics can spend so little time thinking about what happens to us after we die. Um, but God has made it very real, very specific promises about our destiny if we are faithful to him. Um, God has told us that we will rise again after we die, body and soul, to live with him together. But what exactly is this all going to look like? Um, what does it mean uh, when to say that our bodies will rise again? Um, and in order to answer that question, what is it going to look like? We have to go back to the beginning, um, when God first created us. Uh, God designed us um, with both bodies and souls. And we need to uphold the goodness of both of them. We are both body and soul together, and we're meant to be that way for eternity. Uh, in many ways, when we are in heaven after death, 
being without our bodies, that's quite an unnatural state for us because our natural state is we body and soul together. So heaven is not the final end either. And God says this, and this is what we're talking about here at the last judgment. Um, heaven is not the end. And then if we go on, uh, Francis, if I'm going to ask you to read Revelation 21 as well for me, if that's, oh, if that's okay. No problem. Yeah, go ahead. So from Revelation 21, then I saw a new heaven and, new, and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away, he will wipe every tear from their from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. I think um, if we've ever been to a funeral, um, this the last for, the last section is something we'd be quite familiar with. The promise that God is going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. And this is about what's going to happen in the new heaven and new earth. This is what we're called to. This is our ultimate destiny. Um, and trying to, we're going to try and tease out and figure out what is contained um, in this promise and what kind of implications does it have for our daily lives even now today. So Firstly, where will this awesome and eternal life take place? <clears throat> we really have to engage our imaginations here. Um, obviously, none of us have been to heaven. Um, so we don't have firsthand experience to draw from. Um, but the most important thing to know is that we will be with God. The poet Dante, Dante's Inferno, a lot of Dan Brown, if anyone's a fan of Dan Brown, Dan is a lot of us kind of based on Dante. Um, well, the poet Dante, um, at the end of his long journey through hell, purgatory and heaven um, in the Divine Comedy, he finally comes to the center of heaven and sees God um, as an infinitely bright and dense point of light um, around him. All the angels and saints are gathered. Um, and this is where Dante describes God as the love that moves the sun and other stars. <clears throat> and St. John, um, in the book of Revelation, he just, or um, in one of his other letters, sorry, he describes this vision of God, that what we call the beatific vision, um, which just means, comes from blessed, so the blessed vision, but also means happy, happiness, the vision of happiness. That's what it means in Latin. Um, and so in the first letter of St. John, who wrote Revelation, um, he says that in heaven, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Jesus himself says that in heaven, he will prepare a place for us so that where he is, we also may be. So we all, this is why we should, you know, strive to grow, grow closer uh, to God on earth, because it's really a preparation for that perfect closeness, that sight um, we'll have of Christ in heaven. <clears throat> so why do the scriptures talk about a new heaven and new earth like we have here? What's wrong with the heaven and earth we have now? Kind of, you know. Um, God is telling us something about a future reality um, that is totally beyond our experience. Um, and because it's, frankly, it's beyond the power of our words to describe. Um, perhaps the most powerful image comes along whenever we have this here um, in front of us. I see a new heaven, a new earth. And if you read the full chapter, there is a really striking <clears throat> pardon me, description of um, the things in this. But one of the most important little um, details um, I think is in this passage is the fact that it says um, the Lamb of God is giving light to this city. You know, the catechism, um, it teaches us that the new heavens and new earth um, are a way of expressing the perfect communion 
with God that we're going to establish, what that God is going to establish. Um, everything will be per perfectly centered on God. And <clears throat> also, it isn't going to just be a me and Jesus experience. The image of a city um, really drives home the truth uh, that salvation is about the whole church together. You know, man is not an island. Uh, you're never saved by yourself. Um, it's part of this communion of saints that we've been looking at through the book of Revelation already this past few weeks. And so, <clears throat> um, if I could maybe ask you to read this as well um, for me, uh, Francis. No problem. Um, so the New Jerusalem. One of the angels showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by, this, by its light and kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more, there will be no more night. They will not need the lamp, the light of the lamp, or the light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Thank you. And so we see um, some really important things. Uh, like I said about the lamb giving it light, uh, that it is a city, um, that you're not by yourself. But also there's this um, injunction towards the end where it says that, um, you know, nothing impure can ever enter it, um, nor anything shameful or deceitful. So in other words, anything that is, you know, a disturbance with our relationship with Jesus. Anything that, you know, if we see him for as he is, that means we're looking at him. And so anything that draws our attention away from Christ is something that can be deceitful in a sense, because it draws us away. And they're the things that need to be purified. This is why we need purgatory, to purify us of those times when our gaze was away from Christ. Because the new Jerusalem is about fixing our gaze on the Lamb, um, in communion with everyone else, our relatives, the saints, the saints we pray to, those that we didn't expect to be there, those that we did expect to be there, and also the fact that we are there, God willing. Um, but there is this little thing at the end, um, and we should ask, how should this vision of our destiny shape the way we live now? I would say that there are three steps that we need to take. Uh, first, we need to spend time meditating um, on what the word of God tells us about heaven and our destiny. You know, Pope Benedict said something very beautiful that I always keep going back to. He says, he who sees only with his eyes is truly blind. You know, um, and there is another reality, this fourth dimension. Um, to see love, to see opportunities to grow in love, to see ways of bringing Christ into the world. If we see just the material, then we are losing out on so much of what life is. And this is a kind of purification. This is a purgatory that we can go through now on earth by purifying us of these um, things that take us away from the vision of Christ. So, the first step is we need to meditate on what the word of God tells us about heaven. You know, what's at stake? Because if we don't know what's at stake, then we don't know what we're losing um, or gaining. So we need to think about it. Secondly, uh, we need to repent of any sins that could prevent us from moving towards the destiny that Christ has won for us. You know, uh, the good thing is, I, like I said a few weeks ago, God promises us forgiveness, but he doesn't promise us tomorrow, you know. Um, 
There is no sin that he cannot forgive um, if we ask for it. Um, and thirdly, we need to make a commitment, uh, putting our faith in the promises of Christ um, and telling him that we're ready to live according to the faith in every dimension of our lives, in 2D, 3D, 4D. Now, heaven itself. Jesus and St. Paul, who quotes Isaiah. So Jesus says, you know, I say to you likewise that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner that has repented than over 99 just persons that have no need of repentance. And uh, St. Paul, quoting Isaiah, he says, as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. You know, heaven, where we are able to see God face to face, alongside our community of saints, which hopefully we are members of, um, we cannot picture or imagine how great this is going to be because it is a fulfillment of our deepest desires because it is our creator our redeemer our sanctifier um completely imbuing our existence um and the fact that people are joyful in heaven when we do repent um, it's not, you know, there's a great phrase, the church isn't, you know, a museum of saints, it's a hospital of sinners. Um, and that is true, because if you picture it, every time we go to confession, uh, which is why we so need the sacraments, uh, every time we go to the confession, you know, there is that deep joy in heaven, um, because we are making use of the, sac the sacraments that Christ left us and that Christ died for to give us. Hi. Another thing that should give us comfort. Um, Francis, if you would read this for me, please. So from John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If there were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I am the way, the truth and the life. Here we see it, you know, words of Christ, pretty clear. Um, if you think of it right now, God is preparing a place for us for you like for me like this is individual as well you know there are many rooms rooms for us uh it's not going to be in a stable <laughs> he's not going to repay us with the kindness we showed him i uh, it'll be tenfold twentyfold sixtyfold a hundredfold um and we don't have to go it alone because we're just following the way of christ and by meditating on the scriptures, by going to the sacraments, by going to mass, we will see that way of Christ, you know, and he is the way. Um, now, something that I quite like talking about, um, but often not talked about, the resurrection of the dead. So in the Apostles' Creed, so when we say our rosary, we uh, towards the end, we start saying, I believe in the Holy Spirit, uh, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. What are we talking about? <laughs> when we say the resurrection of the body, stop. What is he on about? Because that is something we profess to believe. When we talk about um, the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come, the resurrection of the dead is closely associated with uh, Christ's uh, return. Um, the church teaches that the resurrection of the dead is going to come immediately before uh, the last judgment that we kind of looked at a little bit at the start. So when I said earlier about heaven being an unnatural state for us because we don't have our bodies, well, 
And if the new heaven and new earth is the natural destiny of us, we will have our bodies, glorified bodies. Think of it. We proclaim the assumption of our lady, our body and soul into heaven. She has a body. If we think about Jesus, the resurrection, and then he ascends into heaven, he has a body. We, after we die, hopefully go to heaven. Um, then at the end of time, when there will be the resurrection, everyone will have their body again, glorified, hopefully. Um, then we will hopefully move on to the new heaven and new earth. And so we're called to live in hope of the new heaven and new earth. Uh, we don't really know what the um, return of our Lord is going to look like. We don't know when it's going to happen. We've discussed this in previous weeks. Um, that kind of remains a mystery. We don't know how the universe is going to be transformed either, because there's going to be heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never pass away. Like this is a temporary abode. Um, and so we're called to live in hope. Um, and I mention these things because sometimes, you know, we might feel overwhelmed by the weakness, miseries, violence, injustices, sins, suffering um, of life and human history. Uh, some may even think, oh, there's no point, there's no end of this, um, and give up hope. But this isn't really the Christian perspective on things. You know, we believe that uh, God entered the world and God entered human history. We believe that um, in his son, he continues to be in our midst. I am with you always till the end of time. And so even though scriptures don't tell us when it's going to happen, it does say that it is going to happen. Suddenly and unexpectedly, you know, keep watch is always the line in Matthew's gospel. Um, and so it's at this time that we need to, uh, so what's going to happen at the resurrection of the dead? Well, the whole human race um, will witness the public um, manifestation, the public showing um, of each person's good and evil actions and their consequences. Um, this isn't, you know, a kind of, oh, parade our works around us or whatever but it's just going to show that we are connected we know this um <laughs> the, the pandemic shows us how connected we are to each other how much we need other people our actions also have those consequences and the final judgment is going to show us how we can how we have uh, for better or worse acted in the world um and if we follow the little way of Therese or something like that, where we try to make the most of every little action, every little opportunity, then this isn't a moment to fear. Um, it's a moment to show how our prayers, how our actions have helped others, perhaps even um, on their journey with Christ. Um, so it's a great opportunity. And so um, when in uh, the book of Revelation, it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Um, Pope John Paul kind of talks about, um, you know, and we see it in the letters of St. Paul, you know, about creation groaning under the burden of evil. Um, but it's destined uh, to be set free from this decay and obtain the liberty, the freedom of the children of God. And so... It should be our prayer um, with St. Paul. Um, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And that our Lord will welcome us into eternal life with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And so that's kind of the little reflection on new heaven, new earth. Just a little recap of what we have done over the past several weeks. Week one, why scriptures? Um, why revelation? Um, week two, it was about the cost of discipleship. These were the themes we all discussed. Week three, the woman clothed in the sun. Week four, the marriage feast of the lamb and the mass. And week five was about a new heaven and new earth. 
And really what Bingham and I were trying to, uh, not trying to achieve, but um, on our reading of this book of Revelation, there are these major themes that run through it and that we can tease out of it. And it shows you, you know, the richness and depth of scripture with all these great truths of the faith that come out. And so if we pick up our scriptures, if we become acquainted with um, what it's all about, then it will really deepen our relationship with Christ and um, really help us on our way, on our journey. <laughs> Bingham is here. Um, and that is all, that's everything I have. So I'll stop sharing and I will bring us back to a little bit of a discussion now on this. Sorry, lads, about that. Just, just Dr. Time. Michael, you literally, um, we, Michael just literally just finished. So no, I know. I, heard... I, watched, I watched the last 10 minutes online and I didn't want to jump in and interrupt them. I was late, so we had a bit of an emergency in the lab, so I had to sort that out before I'm still in the office. <laughs> Brilliant. So, but here, Michael Donnelly, thank you so much. I That was amazing. I've like... Thank you. Please don't. <laughs> I, I don't need Here, um, we've just got. We'll talk, have a few kind of questions, but we'll just jump in because a, one of our prisoners, Veronica, has just asked an absolute whopper. Oh no! She I'm said, "You're not about to be having a new year." I just say that. Will you see your loved ones? Will you see your loved ones eventually? Why do you think that looks like? Uh, do you know way you would say when oh, somebody dies? Oh, he's up there with. We Johnny, or he's up there with his, yeah. Like how do how do we how do we interpret that, or what do you think in, the, in light of the bigger revelation? Okay, um, I hope it's a bit clearer now after talking about the city. You know, um, yeah. we will see them uh, in the new heaven and new earth after after heaven after this earth or after this heaven, and uh, when we are reunited with our bodies again, we'll have bodies. Our loved ones will also have bodies. We will see them. We will be able to talk with them. Um, it would, I, personally, I couldn't really see it being much of a heaven if I didn't have some of my best friends there um, uh, or some of my family. And I see it happening in the way in, well, it's, it's hard to imagine, obviously, uh, but um, it'll be more perfect. There'll be no suffering. There'll be no pain. Uh, we'll be able to communicate. We'll be with God. It'll be more than the Garden of Eden. Yeah, if that's true. But yeah, we definitely. Um, will. Yeah. So no, yeah, no, I definitely because uh, I I'm, I'm wondering that our minds probably can't comprehend because I have this kind of simplistic I have this simplistic image of like seeing a granny like oh, yes I, like running over and it's I I think there would be an element of that or. Where God will reunite us in the resurrection, you know, um, yeah, but it'll be it'll be much we talk about them. much different. Pardon? It'll be much better, but absolutely. Yeah. Like if you think about yeah, it, yeah. if we ever read and if the post resurrect, like after Jesus uh, resurrected, but before he ascended, he was chatting away with people. He was yeah, with yeah. them, and if that's yeah. what our where we're going, mm -hmm. it'll be the same. For sure. Sorry, it drops up. Brilliant. So um, I've just a couple of quick questions. I think Phil, um, Phil and Sheen says something interesting on that. Does he? Go for it. Like you're breaking up, Michael. Sorry, go for it again. <laughs> um, Phil and Sheen says, I don't know if you said this earlier because I was late. You probably did. Sorry. Can you hear me okay? Or am I dodging? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can hear you says there's three surprises. Oh, I can't. Fulton touch Sheen you. says that there's three surprises when you get to heaven. Did you touch on that? Um, no. You'll yeah. be you'll be surprised. At, you'll be surprised at the people that are there, and you thought that they wouldn't be there. You'll be surprised at the people who you thought would be there that aren't there, and you'll also be surprised that you are there. So that's quite nice. Yeah. Here, can I ask, uh, actually, that because that could be surprised by people. 
St. John Marie Vianney, my, yeah. my big mate here, mm-hmm. once said, and, I, and this is because this scares the life out of me, and I've mentioned it before, uh, when we talk about the new heaven and the new earth, that every priest will be in heaven or hell, but, but wherever they be, wherever they end up, they'll have 50,000 souls standing behind them. Mm-hmm. And uh, can, we, can we disregard that? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I I would have to be a brave soul to disregard a saint. Let me tell you that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that was a that was a side note. But uh, no, thank you, Michael. There's loads and loads there, and you know this theme of the resurrection of the body is so it's so strange, and um, but it, it's actually the hope that we have. And and there's something that you said um, that I'd love you to bring on because. Because you said, um, I mean, that's why we need purgatory, and you talked about, oh, yeah. and you talked about that briefly. You kind of, you kind of glanced on that a wee bit. Can you say a little bit more about that? Because one of the arguments would be that um, surely the cross of Christ is sufficient, you know, and but actually it is. We're not saying it's not, um, <laughs> but that period of preparing. So can you just talk about that a bit? Sure, absolutely. There's. In my understanding, anyway, which is obviously not perfect, um, there is a difference between redemption and salvation, all right? Jesus absolutely redeemed us, 100%. Boom, he died on that cross, redemption. How that redemption is accepted by us is us working out with Christ our salvation, all right? Now, he is 100%. You cannot, we can't save ourselves. We can't uh, redeem ourselves. We can't do any of these things. Um, and so if we have, um, so Jesus has redeemed us through the cross. If we accept that um, sacrifice of Christ into our lives so much, it has to transform us from the inside out, right? If we're working for Christ, doing things for Christ, that will orient everything towards Christ. But the more we turn away from Christ, turn our vision away from Christ. Now, we didn't do a 180 and headed downstairs, you know, um, but we're just kind of turning away from him. And um, well, then St. Paul talks about us being purified by fire, uh, purifying our vision, because if we want to see God face to face, we have to purify our vision. And Jesus talks, you know, about um um, you know, you're, you're, you're so close, but you're just not there. That's an imperfection, right? Um, says that to a rich young man. There's one thing you still have to do, and he doesn't do it. Um, and so there has to be that kind of purification of our own desires so that we're totally oriented to Christ. Um, and that purification is a sign of God's mercy because he doesn't say, okay, here's the bar. You didn't reach it. Everything below that bar, you're going to hell. He says, okay didn't quite get to that bar of perfection but i will lift you up and that's what it is um brilliant but, uh, yeah I'll, yeah we can get into some of the more scriptural passages if you really really want to yeah, no um, no that's just a good i think that's a good uh, kind of explanation um francis any thoughts any comments at this stage i want to pick up there was where i read it down here one of the most beautiful that's an analogy it's the room not a stable that god has prepared for us yeah i really love that i must say yeah, so that, could you elaborate a wee bit more on that just just for well for me personally um okay so um i kind of i you know i didn't have that written down or anything um that just came to me um okay. but when when you think about it when when jesus came to earth um the creator coming to the creation. Uh, there was no room in the inn. There was, uh, he had nowhere to lay his head. He even talked about it, even during his ministry. He said, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head, you know. Um, but he was in the manger in the inn. And luckily, if because of God's love, he cannot do things by half. He does things to God's measure. And so... It has to content his own love for us. And that is why, you know, we cannot comprehend heaven because it's love till God's measure, not ours. 
And that's why when we talk about, you know, um, if we compare a manger or an inn to a mansion or a palace, it's the comparison, it blows it out of the water. And so our human mangers, our human attempts are nothing compared to God's attempt and God will get it right. Um, there's a beautiful um, book um, called The Interior Castle by St. Teresa of Avila. Um, she's a doctor of the church on prayer. Um, and she talks about the different mansions, you know, um, and about, it's about God lavishing things on us uh, because he wants to. And I love a freebie. <laughs> so if, if God is going to do all the work and I just have to say, yes, like our lady did, that's all she had to do, just say yes. If I do that, boom, freebie, mansion in heaven. But it's a sign of God's lavishness. Um, so it is. The altruistic love of the Father and the love of the Son through the Spirit. and It, it drove him from heaven. It drove him out of there to earth. Um, you know, there's that self-emptying, the kenosis, you know, um, he emptied himself, uh, taking on the form of man and to be um, taking on his cross. As we life. are. Yeah, forget the full line and um, he yeah. was in Philippians. Um, and do, yeah. do you know, um, I never thought about the fact that even the saints in glory um, in heaven are still in a somewhat imperfect, imperfect state. Absolutely. Because the, because the resurrection of the body hasn't happened. Do you know, I'd never thought about that. And I was, I remember having a conversation with a guy, a friend of mine, um, not from a Catholic, Catholic tradition, and he said that he doesn't believe anybody's in heaven, <laughs> which, uh, because um, he believed in a theology of the resurrection of the dead, that, you know, uh, that when the resurrection happens, that we're all in this state of eternal slumber. Um and I, I don't think that's scriptural, and I, and I don't think that, that makes any sense, personally. Um, but the fact that, but what you said actually highlights the fact that, you know, we can, that, he, he's, that in some ways he's half right, you know, that, that there is, you know, we're not, we're not at the resurrection of the body, but God is so perfect, and God's out of, uh, outside of everything, uh, and that our souls are immortal, our souls are eternal, our souls... Um, are, are, are with God and that's where we aim to be but the, the new heaven is is where it'll all kind of make sense in, in some ways is that right yeah mm -hmm. class class I, I I thought that was powerful Michael Bingham how much of yes. it did you get did you get because you're a bit of an expert in this you know so I'm not an expert on anything let's be honest <laughs> um, oh, no, talk unfortunately... to me. what what no, just what did you think? Any thoughts? Any comments? Yeah, no, I, I think it's interesting because for me, it's something you don't really, I don't know, get taught quite a lot about or you even really think about. You think that you just die and go to heaven and that's the end of the, the story, as it were. You know what I mean? Um, so, because sometimes that can be quite daunting, especially last week whenever I was talking about um, the vision of heaven from John and, and the mass and like, I'm sure there's people out there going, tell you what, see if there was an eternity of mass in heaven, like, not sure I fancy that. That would have my head away, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially if Father James is doing it. <laughs> <Only joking>. but, <laughs> um, you know what I mean? There's kind of this, almost like this eternal, this eternity kind of like before God type of something in that that's maybe a bit daunting or a bit almost concerning or something that's like oh, what, what is that's a bit weird and the fact that you know there's a new heaven and a new earth to, to follow that um a place for us to dwell with god and um, and when we hear something like the new earth being a part of the new heaven you know um because we're familiar with ours it makes us feel a bit more comfortable and so i like i sort of like it's almost good to think about that and to like know, to know these things that you know it's not just like you go to heaven this new place that actually there's more to come and it's actually going to be maybe eternity is going to be a bit more familiar you know what i mean and paradise is yeah. is something that is going to be familiar to us because it's ingrained in each of our hearts essentially you know yeah. uh, i uh i get a bit i i when i i get so excited when i hear that this stuff about 
do you know what glory is going to look like? Um, that pain will be no more. That suffering will be no more. That COVID-19 will back off. God forgive me. Um, with, that all these things will be a thing of the past. Um, but often I think, and I could be totally wrong in this, um, like as Catholics, right? And, and, and this is a thought, so, so bear with me in this. Um, that we are, we are all about, you know, like a theology of suffering and, and the pain's awesome. And, and that, you know, suffering produces endurance and, and, you know, the divine mercy, you know, for the sake of a sorrowful passion and, and, and all these things that are very good Friday focused. Do you think that's true? And that's, that's that our mind is preparing us for that, that this life, is, is the sorrow, like, is the, the hope of waiting, that Good Friday, our hope is that we're we are at Good Friday waiting for Easter, do you know what I mean? Waiting for Easter Sunday, waiting for this moment of glory that um, and maybe some Pentecostal traditions, their theology is that we can touch heaven right here, we, the presence of God, and heaven comes amongst us. Um, do you understand what I mean? Do you understand the question? Um is yeah. it is it both and or how do we marry that because yeah. because um <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I'm all about Easter Sunday you know but maybe I don't focus too much on Good Friday you know well I think um a lot of that, I, I, sorry um I think a lot no, of I was this, just going to say oh, yeah yeah I I I think um you're right and I understand um. In the um, in the Latin Church in the um, in the Western Church, uh, part of the Catholic Church, um, we kind of really from the earliest times always you know lent more towards you know um, the Good Friday uh, you know meditating on that, and in the Eastern Church, um, they lent more towards the resurrection, and they were like, oh, it was about different focuses, you know. Um, we happen to focus on, uh, maybe it's because of the weather. Uh, we love the drudge and dreary of it all, because uh, it's very familiar. Uh, and in the Eastern, you know, where you think about Mediterranean, you think about, you know, beautiful lands, exotic lands, it's probably easier for them to imagine a beautiful heavenly paradise. Um, but um, I think that's just more of a Western kind of concept, um, that we prefer the suffering side of it. Um, like, for example, for something I'm doing a lot of reading on personally at the minute, I, I, I love a lot of the Greek fathers um, and what they think about things, um, but it's, it's heavily focused on the resurrection. And that's the beauty of the whole of Catholicism. We're not bound by what do people in Ireland, England, France, Spain, Germany think, but we can go to anywhere in the Catholic church and say, well, what do you find striking? And the Greek fathers, say, they say, I find the resurrection striking. Great. What do you think about it? Help me, enrich me, enrich my understanding. And that's the beauty of, you know, the whole Catholic understanding of things. And even though something I grew up with and love um, with the Divine Mercy Chaplet, um, meditating on uh, the passion, uh, it, that's, that was my bread and butter. That is my bread and butter um you know every day doing that um but that has a really great um uh, message and insight because it shows us the love of god it instead of focusing on oh what can i get out of it resurrection resurrection um it's saying what did christ put into it and he put his entire self into it and by realizing that that can help us live better today it's like if Christ can go to the cross, I can go and say hello to my mother-in-law or whoever it is that, you know, whoever the devil is in your life. <laughs> um, this is another reason for celibacy. Um, <laughs> but um, it's just a difference in emphasis. But as a global church, um, these different emphases enrich our understanding. It doesn't detract. And we shouldn't be so narrow focused in our own little thing, but see what the entire church is talking about. Mm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, maybe one of the questions was about the divine chaplet. Did you see that, or or was that off the cuff? 
I kind of noticed it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and the Divine Mercy Chaplet is is really it's something that I'm coming to understand. And Francis is smirking there because because we've had a you know I, I just didn't understand it you know but it, it's whenever I I began to pray it with with uh, with the sick you know that I began to understand it you know that we're in those moments of of close to death that we're heading for glory you know that that it's all about Jesus you know and and his and his mercy and and where we're going you know um so um yeah if anybody has any more questions um we have a, few, a wee bit of time left on any of the weeks that we've done or any any last comments and remarks i found um this course extremely extremely uh challenging i've learned stuff uh, and, and just to say to Michael and Michael, um, the comments that I've received from parishioners who have uh, said how much they've learned and how much they've grown um, in understanding the Mass and understanding heaven and, and making it making what's a scurrying that actually I can understand that this is, this is for us as well. Because, and that's a difficult <laughs> skill because it would nearly be like where people... I know in the Catholic world almost almost run away from script, scripture because they don't understand it and uh, that we're not meant to read it, you know. Um, so thank you both for um, your faithfulness and your diligence and your well prepared um, presentations. They've been really, really, really amazing. So thank you so much. You're more than welcome. The only thing I would add to that is, if you're truly thankful, then please. If you have five minutes, to offer, that would be it. So we missed that. So God, oh, was that? Sorry. Can, am I here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, if if you if you really did um, find it um, useful, if anyone who did find it useful was able to even give five minutes and you know say a prayer for both of us. Um, that is the best thanks you can give. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, bother. Um, that is, that is no bother. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that you're prayed for in the parish and for all that you do. For Mike Old Bingham, who's getting married very soon. And we're all very excited about it. And uh, for all, so Michael. Donnelly, is there anything we can pray for? I mean, just pray for me. I, I think, you know, God knows better than I do. God knows better than we do. If you can just pray for God's will to be done. Yeah. And are you, yeah, maybe it's unfair to ask you about your vocation. <laughs> on I, I kind of think but... where these things are going. Um, and I will <laughs> say I am more than happy to talk about anything after the recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no bother, no bother. Well, listen. Um, I know we're for a few minutes ahead of time, but um, I'll just uh, finish, and we'll maybe um, because we've got ten minutes, we'll maybe pray a decade of the rosary together. Would that be okay? Yeah, so, sure. So maybe if uh, I will, everybody mute apart from old Donnelly will respond. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. The second half of the Our Father and Hail Marys? I'm oh, sorry. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I believe in one other almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then, he shall come to judge the living I believe, and the dead. Oh. I, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And we meditate on the resurrection from the dead. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, and is not at the hour for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray Pray for the hour for death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, and is not at the hour for death. Amen. Glory to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. So it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Lord, with thy end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. St. Martin of Tours, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless, guys. I'll see you very soon, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, see you. Right. So